there is, of course, genetic predisposition. It's not that you're going to have a specific gene or the or a variant of a gene that's going to determine how much fat, but rather, even though there are some genes that are very much influential there, like MC4R or leptin, um, but these are mutations that are very uncommon. This is not your garden variety. I'm gaining weight or I'm even obese. There's no distinct genetic mutation in, in the average version of having too much body fat. But there is clearly something familial about it. Even if there's not a distinct genetic pattern, if mom and dad are overweight or obese, it's very likely offspring will be too. Now, you can already see the conflict with regards to environment. You know, the same environment that's making mom and dad obese is going to be the same environment that this child is being raised in. But even beyond that, there is, in fact, a familial inheritance to this, um, not only determining how much body fat gets stored, but also even where a person is storing fat. If you are someone who struggles with fat and you look at your parents or siblings and they do too, this is just going to be something that is more of a struggle. Um, there are, of course, um, dietary influences, and indeed, I would say these are the most relevant, um, but uh, it, it perhaps the most succinct way of describing the relevance of diet is that there must be two conditions that are met to promote the storage of fat. You cannot have fat storage with only one of them. Um, you have to have both, and those are elevated insulin and sufficient energy. Now, that latter point, I understand it perhaps comes off as a little vague. So let me explain it in the context of the first point. Sufficient insulin, as I somewhat elaborated on a moment ago, there can, there can literally be no fat storage on a human or any animal unless insulin is elevated. It cannot happen. It is impossible. And, and, and lest you think, well, Ben, what about all those other, maybe a person ate a thousand calories in excess. If insulin is low, the body will compensate for that excess by both increasing its metabolic rate substantially by several hundred calories if insulin is low, and it will um, start wasting energy from the body in the form of producing ketones. Remember, every ketone has a caloric value roughly comparable to glucose. And when you're in ketosis, you're breathing out those ketones or urinating out the ketones. Then if the problem got so bad, then glucose levels get so high that glucose is also spilling out into the urine. So the body has ways to compensate, to reconcile this. But again, if insulin is low, there's no potential for fat storage. Now, if insulin is high, there is the signal for fat storage. But insulin itself is not energy. It's not the hydrocarbons that are capable of being stored as fat within the lipid droplet of a fat cell. And that's where the second point comes in. It's one thing to tell the cell to store fat, which is what insulin is doing, and why that is a drum I beat so loudly. A fat cell, like every cell, must be told what to do with the energy that's available to it. Hormones do that, particularly insulin. So again, it's one thing to tell the cell to store fat, but it's another to actually have the hydrocarbons or the calories, to say it another way, to actually fuel that storage. And that's where the sufficient energy or sufficient calories comes in. So you must have an insulin stimulus to store the fat, and you must have sufficient calories to fuel that storage or provide the bulk of the storage. And then physical activity exercise is generally irrelevant, to be frank. One of my hopefully clever quips, is that you eat smart to be lean, but you exercise to be strong. And so there's not really much to say. Ex uh, studies that have looked only at physical activity um, find that it, it it's generally a big failure. Uh, and that's in part because if you exercise more, not only are you actually burning a fantastically small amount of calories of energy, but then you also compensate usually by getting a little hungrier the next day or so maybe not immediately after within the first few hours, but give it a little time and your hunger will go up.